OK, you're in Microsoft Excel and you want to learn about date formulas. Let's start off with the formula for today's date. You use the today function equals today, open bracket, close bracket. If I press enter, that returns today's date. Now that formula is useful if you want today's date to automatically update. So tomorrow it will show tomorrow's date and so on and so forth. Now, if you want a date stamp, so you want today's date, but you want it to stay as that date in the future, you can use this shortcut key, control semicolon. Now you can also use a formula to return the current date and time. And the function you want for that is the now function. So equals now, open bracket, close bracket. That returns the current date and time. Now this time won't update automatically, it will only update when the spreadsheet recalculates and it recalculates whenever you edit a cell within that sheet. It will also recalculate when you reopen the workbook. If you want a date and timestamp, so something that stays the same, you can use this combination of shortcut keys. So first of all, it would be control semicolon that gives you the current date. Then you type a space in and then you'd use control shift semicolon and that would return the time. Just need to widen the column to show both the date and the time. Now, the other thing you might want to do is work out how many days in a date period. So I want to find out the number of days between these two dates. And to do this, it's simple subtraction. So I'd say equals the end date minus the start date. Now, if I press enter, I get the answer six. If I want to include both the start date and the end date in the count, then I need to add one to my calculation. So next we're gonna find the number of weekdays in a date period. And the function we use for that is called net workdays. Now net workdays asks for a start date, comma, and then an end date. And then if I close the bracket, it gives me the number of days, the number of work days between those two dates. So excluding Saturday and Sunday. The other thing you could do is work out a date in the future based on the start date and the number of days. So that would be simple addition. So I take my start date and then I'd add the number of days I want to count into the future. And that's the date, 88 days from this date. I could also do this for the number of weekdays in the future. So to do that, I would use the workday function the first argument asks for a start date, comma, and then days is the number of work days that you want to count into the future. So for me, that's 88. If I close the bracket, press enter, it gives me a number as an answer, and that's actually the serial number behind the date that I want to display in this cell. So all I need to do is go up to my ribbon, and on the Home tab, in this list that currently reads as General, I need to select short date. Now I can also construct a date from values that are already in cells. So I have the day and the month and the year in separate cells. Now the function that does this is called date. It's got three arguments, year, month, and day. So my year is over here, comma. My month is here, comma. And my day is here. So if I close the bracket and press enter, it returns that date. Now the last thing I'm gonna show you is how to return the last day of a specified month. So I want to return the last day of the month that this date belongs to. And the function for this is called EO month. So my start date is up here, comma, and my month is here, two months on from that date. Press enter and I get a serial number for the date, which I need to format as a date. So this date is the end of the month, two months on from this date. If I change this value to zero, it returns the end of the current month. If I put minus one, it returns the end of the previous month. Okay, that's all I wanted to cover in this particular video. Hopefully that's useful. If it is, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe and I'll see you next video.